it's good to see you this morning with us. We will begin worship here in just a few minutes. We are streaming here at St. John's Facebook page as well as St. David's Facebook page. So hopefully everything will work out. This is the first summer I've not had at least one fresh tomato. Well, I grew yellow ones this year. They're less acidic, right? But they still taste good. Oh, yeah. I like it. Where's it at? Coldwater Creek. Oh, the store? Are they going out of business or something? No. No, just a sale? This goes with so many, it goes with all hunter green, burgundy, red, navy blue, turquoise. You can wear anything with this. Truly. Orange, if you wear orange.
morning. Oh, that's right. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to worship on this chilly morning. It'll probably warm up as we go along, which will be nice. Uh, we'll watch the weather throughout the week and um, kind of just be flexible if we think it's too cold when we first get up. I know I can't see anything. Um, or when we get out here, we'll move to parking lot. But um, it should get a little bit warmer this morning. So let's take a moment to center our minds and get focused for worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. To his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have you are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites come Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, 
Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have a meal of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Again, the psalm will be said antiphonally with the people reciting the bold verses. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O Jacob of Israel, his chosen. He led out his people with silver and gold. In all their tribes there was not one that stumbled. Egypt was glad of their going, because they were afraid of them. He spread out a cloud for a covering and a fire to give light in the night season. They asked, and quails appeared, and he satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and water flowed, so the river ran in the dry places. God remembered his holy word, and Abraham his servant. So he led forth his people with gladness, his chosen with shouts of joy. that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Hallelujah. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege of not, on, of, of not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well since you are having the same struggle that you saw that I had, and now hear that I still have. The Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day of scorching heat. But he replied, and he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We hear this, oh, I can't step that way. We hear this reading every three years, and we nod and we smile and we think about it very little. What does it really say? And why were the people upset, not only who were in the story, but who are listening to the story. So let's take a moment and just focus on that, let our anxiety about the situation rumble up a little bit and own it. To give you a little modern version of this, my father, in between owning his own bakery and working for another bakery, he worked for a company called Man One. And it was a temporary workers program where the men would come each day and if there was work they were hired and sent out to do whatever and it was usually physical labor of some sort um, heavy duty work so they would all gather in the morning line up outside the building some dressed better than others some more sober than others but it was a first come first serve program so they would stand there and they would chat and they would discuss what was going on and their hopes for the day. And when the boss would come, they'd all hope and pray that they were one who got chosen that day to earn a wage. And so the boss would pick those that he needed, the number of people he needed. He just went down the line and counted and when he got done, he was done. But they all knew that sometimes something would happen throughout the day that maybe just maybe there might be a need for another worker and they didn't have anything better to do and so they would loiter they'd stand around outside the building smoking and chatting being a nuisance probably to some degree but they would wait in the hopes that maybe just maybe they would get hired and if they got hired often it was a set wage. This is how much you would get for this particular day. And to make it easier on the bosses, they often 
depending if it was like a more than a half day, they would still get the same wage. But of course, in this country, we don't discuss how much we make. We don't stand around and discuss it. But still, everybody knew. And so then the next day, they'd come together and someone would find out that so-and-so got hired just before lunchtime and he got the same amount of money they did. And they would be angry. I worked more than he did. I work harder than he does. I'm a better person than he is. Why is he getting as much as I'm getting? You can understand that, a sense of fairness, a sense of brightness. We all know about that in this country and apparently back in Jesus' day that was an issue as well, right? That you should be paid for what you do. And then in this country, we also then not only take into account what you're doing, how long you're doing it, but how long you've done it, your experience, and how much education you have to do it. There are exceptions to those things, but they go into the factoring of how much you make, and we grumble about it. Well, I only make this amount of money, and that's not right. I'll use a, a personal example and embarrass my daughter. She right now is doing social work, traveling two to four hours a day in her car. She makes $16 an hour. Hired for another company, uh, making phone calls to uh, contact Trace. He's making $30 an hour, and he's working from home and they've given him a computer. <laughs> now you might say that his job is pretty important because it's helping to keep us healthy, but so is hers. She's working with foster families and parents, visitations. But they agreed to those wages. That's what they've agreed to do. So this is about fairness or we think it's about, and we get around anxious because in the story, it's not fair. The last person earns as much as the first person. And if you think about it with my daughter and her boyfriend, it's also about covet, coveting what others have, right? Being jealous of what others have. Luckily, they have a great relationship, so this isn't an issue. But Think about your neighbor or something that you might not have a great relationship with and you want what they have and you've studied longer than they have or maybe you're a harder worker than they are or at least you soon you are. So this is a warning against coveting what your neighbors or someone else is getting to be grateful for what you have, to be glad that you're earning a But more importantly, it's about grace. Grace is not fair. It's not fair at all. God does not have a tally sheet up in heaven going, okay, you did this and you did that, and this is worse than that. God is not doing that. But we feel like God does that. When we think about ourselves and what we've done, we think, oh, nobody's done worse than I have done. Or, well, maybe somebody's done worse than I've done, but I still feel guilty. I still feel terrible. I still feel unworthy. And the Lord says, come. Your grace is the same as someone else's. Your grace, your redemption, your salvation is the same as someone else's. And then, of course, it's true for those that we judge unworthy. Now, it might be, as we look at the story, that someone comes to the faith late in their life and we think, boy, that's unfair. I've been good my whole life. I've done everything as best I can do. I've gone to worship every Sunday that I could possibly go. I didn't miss a Sunday unless I had to. And that person came to faith at 90. And they were a jerk their whole life. Why do they get grace? Why couldn't I have had more fun? Or maybe we make the judgment that 
someone's not Christian enough, they're not behaving enough like Christ, and we feel that we are, or at least more than they are, right? Someone who is unrepentant for having child after child after child without having a job. They should know better. You know what causes that. It's not fair that they get grace when I know better. Or someone who does their darndest to live a good life and comes up against something that causes them to do something wrong and then they get back on the wagon or they begin to behave again and then they repeat and they repeat and they repeat and we're tired of forgiving them. Why is God's grace still for them? Grace is not fair. That's the good news, even though it makes us uncomfortable. That God's overabundant, ever-flowing, extravagant, over-the-top love for God's creations. There is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. There is nothing that those that we feel aren't good enough that keeps God from loving them and caring for them. There is no us and them. It's all us when it comes to God. And we can be grateful for that because when we mess up, even when we feel horrible, we can come to confession, we know we are forgiven, we know that that grace reaches out farther than we could go away, farther than the wrong we can do. Because God wants to love us above and beyond more than we can know. Remember that. When you're feeling terrible about yourself or judging someone else, God's grace is not fair. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us stand and proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate. Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer prayers for all who labor in the vineyard of the Lord and for all in any danger and need. For this holy gathering and for the people of God in every place. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all peoples and their leaders for candidates for office and for justice, mercy, and peace in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
for all who work for daily wages and for their employers and managers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For abundant fruits of the earth and for safety from violent storm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, travelers and the victims of war, prisoners and refugees, and for the dying and the dead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our city and those who live in it, families, companions, and all those we love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lifting our voices with all creation, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed John the Evangelist, and Blessed David of Wales, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ our Lord. Gracious and merciful God, who honors the last as well as the first, hear the prayers we offer this day and welcome your people into your kingdom. Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <laughs> Offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. There we go. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name, both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see, the world at the, you see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, your great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your Church, gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and he was not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord, to whom, to whom, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. God knows what we mean, right? <laughs> My dear friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this journey. So I implore you, be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Shut up.